Hey guys, uh, welcome to my first virtual decorating with KC class. Today we're going to be decorating this tulip basket cookie. Um, if you don't already have supplies, I'll put a link below to supply list and we have two bundles available on the website, a basic and a full supply list, um, full bundle with the supplies you need for the class. Um, as you're going, I tend to decorate slowly, especially when I'm talking. So feel free to fast forward. If I'm going too slow, pause if I'm going too fast. If you have questions, always feel free to reach out to me. Um, you can comment below with questions and I will do my best to respond to all of them. Um, have fun, let's decorate. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is get our icing colors ready now this might look like there's you know a number of colors going on but we actually don't have to mix that much so only thing we're actually going to mix right now is this brown color for the basket and it's actually a light tan but we're gonna be giving it some shading. So we're not gonna do a lot. I'm only making the one cookie. If you are doing more than one, like this is way more icing than we're gonna need, but we're gonna do two consistencies here. All right, so take your brown. We're just gonna add a tiny bit, just a tiny bit, because we want this to be pretty light. Now, if you'll see, while I'm mixing, it's pretty thick. We're gonna want a thicker piping consistency and a flood consistency of this one. But I'm gonna go ahead and add a little water because my piping consistency needs to be thinner than this. So I like to thin out my icing with a spray bottle. It really lets you control the amount of water. I'm also gonna move this so I don't run the risk of accidentally spraying it with water while I'm doing this. <clears throat> now, when I'm mixing my icing, you can see I sort of scrape the sides and then I paddle it back and forth against the sides of the bowl. What that's gonna do is it's gonna push out the air bubbles so that as I'm mixing, I have the least amount of air incorporated. Royal icing, you really don't want to incorporate too much air. Okay, so I need to be thinner than that. And we could go a little bit darker than that. But it's not really necessary. I think I'm going to go just a tiny bit darker. That's a much. I put a spoon. Always make sure you scrape all of your edges as you go. You don't want to leave any amount unincorporated. Okay, so that's pretty thick. Maybe a little thicker than I need for my piping consistency. Now this is, some of this is gonna be personal preference for those of you that are experienced. You might prefer to work with it when it's, when it's really thick or whatever, but this is, I want it to be thick and hold its shape, but not so thick that it's gonna be hurting my wrist to pipe it. Okay, you can kind of see that. I'm gonna go, cause this doesn't need to be stiff, stiff. It just needs to be able to hold its shape when I pipe it. So I think that looks great. I'm gonna get one of our bags. Okay, so this is a detail bag. It's one of my small ones. They actually hold a fair amount of icing. And this is really way more icing than I need for this one cookie. So I'm going to take about half of that, roughly. I'm going to go ahead and fill up the bag. I don't love these bowls because they always fall over. Okay, hold on. Push that down as far as we can. 
tie off the top. Now, I often tie it in a knot, although now that I have my, um, this is the genie bag tire thing. <laughs> There's a name for it. It's in my, it's on my website. Um, I can link to it below, but how amazing is that? And then if you need to open it up again, that just pulls apart. So love, love, love this. Now this is piping. For those of you that have my bags, you have the two um, blocks. So I'm just going to go ahead and mark piping on there so I don't mix it up. Now we're going to just take this, thin it out. Now uh, my flood, we want to do flood consistency on this. I do a single flood. I don't, uh, not only do I not personally care for that ridge that's created if you do, if you pipe the edges in a thicker consistency and then go and fill it in with flood. I like the seamless look, so, um, but also I don't have the patience to be doing two consistency, two consistencies of every color every time, you know. Um, for our purposes here, we're doing it, but when you're doing a whole bunch of colors and then to have to do two consistencies of every single color, really, I just don't have the patience for that. Okay. Yeah, it's still a little thick. Honestly, sometimes I do flood with a little bit thicker. They're just a little thinner. If you were to constantly scrape your sides of your bowls, I'm looking for some good bowls. I don't love these. You can get these on Amazon, but I don't like that small base. I don't. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys has, has a favorite bowl you use for mixing your colors. Let me know. Okay, so if I give it a little shake, you can see it's starting to... This might be a little bit thick if I was flooding an entire cookie, but because we're doing sections, I think it's going to be perfect, like smaller sections. When I'm flooding smaller surface area, I do prefer my icing to be a little bit thicker. This is easier if you have a cup. Of course, I didn't grab a cup. Okay. Go ahead and fill this bag. <laughs> I'm going to make a mess of it. I do like that the bowls are flexible. Okay, push that down, tie it off. And mark this one as flood. Okay. That is really all we need to get started. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is if you notice on here, I have this white background. I personally don't like leaving a naked cookie. Um, I kind of think it looks unfinished most of the time. But also I find that in terms of like a cookie going stale, it stays, it's less likely to go stale. This, the icing works as a very good... Um, like a sealer. So it kind of seals in that freshness. So as long as this side isn't sitting out in the open, um, your cookie just stays moist longer. Anyway, plus, like I said, I feel like it, I feel like it really just kind of gives it a finished look, but I also am not a fan of flooding when flooding is not necessary. So some of you guys may have seen this in my story highlights, but uh, I like to paint the background of the cookie. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a little bit of white icing and we're just gonna put it in one of the sections on your paint palette. That's probably even more than we need, but that's good. Okay, grab one of the things on your list was to have like a wide flat brush. If yours isn't this large, that's okay. Um, get your white color. Put a little bit of white in. The reason we do the white is this keeps it opaque. Without it, 
um, what we're going to do ends up being uh, a little bit translucent, which is fine depending on what the end result you're looking for. But right now we want it to be, we want it to be pretty opaque. I probably overfilled that well. That's okay. I just need to be able to mix it in. We're going to water that icing down quite a bit. Okay, see that? It's still pretty thick. I'm going to go for a lot more water than that. Possibly a little more white. Okay, I'm going to add just a little bit more white color because it's feeling a little translucent right now. Okay, see how liquidy that is? That's exactly what we want. Okay, so now I apologize if you were right-handed and this is hard. Uh, I know a lot of people struggle sometimes with uh, my left-hander videos because they say everything looks, it looks like I'm doing everything backwards. Okay, so we are literally just going to paint this right on. Right now I'm working in the center. I'm going to start bringing it out towards the edges. This would be a great thing to do with the turntable, which of course I didn't grab. Now this is pretty liquidy. I could have gone a little bit thicker than that, but honestly, it doesn't really matter. Most of this, as you can see, most of this is going to be covered up. Um, so when you get to the edges, I want you to kind of pull it like this and off just very gently because we want as crisp of a line as possible. Grab a little bit more. You see, I'm just kind of adding as I go, just around the edges. This is a great way to have that base coat, but not actually sit and flood. It is way faster than flooding. Also uses less icing, so there's that. And in cases like this, where you're going to see very little of the background, I think it's perfect. Okay. So now take a look and see how there's some kind of thinner spots. I'm just going to add a little bit more in those spots. Also, keep in mind, if you look at this, this whole bottom part is going to be covered. So any thin spots down here, I'm not really going to worry about. On the other hand, up here where the handle is, those spots might show. So I'm just going to, because this is so thin, it's going to level out pretty quickly on its own. So really, all I'm going to do is just add a little bit to those spots where it looks really thin and I can see the cookie through it. Now, the more of the white food coloring you add, the more opaque this is going to be. So I'm kind of doing somewhere in the middle. It's not completely opaque, but... Try it sometime without any white food coloring, you'll see what I mean. It's very different. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Doesn't have to be perfect. That's something I need to like chant to myself as I work because I'm a complete perfectionist. Okay, now it's liquidy. However, because it's so thin, this actually does dry very fast. However, I like to speed up the process anyway. So I use a heat lamp for those of you I've taken a class with mine before. You've probably seen me talk about it. I like heat lamps um, because they're inexpensive. They're like, oh, 10 to $15 at a uh, you know, home improvement store. And I store them in my garage and I clip mine 
to the underside of my kitchen counter uh, while I work. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this under the heat lamp. It's going to set it fast. It doesn't need to be 100% dry, but pretty close before we're uh, ready to move on to the next step. Okay, while we're waiting for that to dry, let's get started on some tulips. The great thing about the tulips is you can do them ahead of time. All right, so you should have a tulip mold. Um, yours might be light pink like this, or you might have a blue one. Both of them are the same thing. These are just the newer ones of plain pink. Okay, I'm gonna break off a little chunk of fondant. That's really more than we need, but it's always good to have a little extra. So you got room for error. Okay, I'm gonna just knead this a little bit so it's soft. Okay, we're gonna tint this with some of the fuchsia, the Chef Master fuchsia. Just a little bit. Now, I don't wear gloves <laughs> when I decorate. However, um, a lot of people like to, especially for this part, because since we're needing the color in, I try to keep the color on the inside as I work, see where the concentration of color so I get the least amount on my hands but you can see I'm already getting my fingers dyed so if you want to prevent that you can wear gloves or just plan on wash your hands when you're done and there'll probably be a little bit of staining but I've gotten so used to that I feel like my hands are in a constant state of being stained some color if it starts to get too sticky you can use a little bit of cornstarch basically you just want to keep kneading it until you see no streaks of color left. Okay. It's a little bit light, as you can see. That's definitely lighter. We don't need it to be as dark as that because we're going to use a little bit of color to paint it. I'm going for a medium shade. When I'm doing stuff like this, I like the icing, or in this case the fondant, to be... My starting color to be somewhere in the middle of what my goal is. That way I can come in with light and dark to shade it the way I want. Okay. Start to get a little bit sticky. So I think I'm gonna grab my, my cornstarch. <laughs> and I have this little unicorn brush. This is my cornstarch brush. A tiny bit. Okay, so this is definitely lighter. And I'm going to go ahead and leave it at this because we are going to come in, touch it up with a little white and a little bit more of this fuchsia color. Now, you might notice this is a little bit pinker than what's here. Um, when I mix my colors, I have a tendency to mix a lot of shades <laughs> as I'm playing with. I like to play with shades, but for the simplicity of this class, I decided to keep it just one color. Um, and you can tweak that color if you want, but, okay. but we're gonna keep it simple. Okay, so color's looking pretty good. I don't see any streaks of any other colors. Now for using molds, molds are really, really simple. All you need, we're gonna get, get a little bit of cornstarch, more than you need, and use the brush to sort of push it in to every crevice. But I'm kind of ignoring the um, leaves, or the stem on this one, because we're not going to push any of the color into that. So tap it out on your table or wherever. That way you have a nice coating but you don't have excess sitting in there. Okay, grab a little bit of fondant. Always make sure that when I put it in, the spot I'm gonna start pushing in is nice and smooth, as opposed to pushing this in, because you're gonna see some of those creases in the mold. So start with a nice, smooth spot, and I'm gonna just start pushing it in. Now I have way more than I need, and that's fine. I prefer to start out with more. I'm gonna just use my thumb to press, pull off that extra. 
And now I can go in and clean it up a little. See how I'm avoiding the stem? There's a little ridge right there, which is the bottom of the tulip, the flower part. That's kind of where I'm, where I'm stopping it. Okay. Sometimes I use a little bit of that cornstarch along the back. I always make sure I run my finger along there so these edges are nice and crisp all around the outside of the flower. And now we're gonna let this sit. Um, whenever you're not using your fondant, put it in a piece of plastic wrap or something. I think since I have it handy, I'm just gonna put it in one of my piping bags. I'm gonna twist that end off. That way no air gets to it because the air is gonna dry it out. We're gonna set that aside. We'll just kind of do these as we go. Now, you can just let this sit off to the side and it's gonna to start to harden a little bit so that we can pop it out. I could even pop it out right now, but it would warp a little bit. But I prefer to just pop this in the freezer. If I put this in the freezer, then when I go to flip it out of the mold, there's absolutely no stretching or anything like that, especially since, this, not all molds, but some of them, like this one, see those little, um, that top edge of the tulip. There's a lot of like little ins and outs. That's the sort of stuff that's more likely to catch and then warp when you try and pull it out. So I'm gonna go put this in the freezer. Okay, so your cookie should be dry. We're gonna go ahead and get our stencil out. Now, if you have a stencil genie, go ahead and use it. It's, it's worth using. Now, for Airbrushing, I consider the Stencil Genie to be a total necessity. For our purposes, maybe not as much, but you if you have one, go ahead and grab it because it does make life easier. So line it up. Now we're just gonna be marking the cookie. There are a lot of ways you can use these stencils. Oftentimes I will just airbrush the whole thing, even onto just the naked cookie. However, we don't actually wanna do the entire design because we're changing it up just a little bit so all we're going to do right now is that top line and we're going to do the leaves in the background you can use uh, a food marker if you have one you can use a scribe like this or the tip of your thing Magini. Anything you want to use, I know some people that use a pencil. That's a personal choice because a pencil is non-toxic, um, even if it's not technically a food item. I think I'm just going to go ahead and use my scribe. So I'm going to hold this down. All I'm going to do is we're just going to scratch in this line right here. And then I'm going to do these leaves in the background. You can do the stem if you want to there. It doesn't have to be super perfect. There, you can see that's clearly visible. All right, you can see my icing is just a little bit yellow. That means you can see the cookie through it a little bit. Didn't make it super opaque, but honestly, that's just fine. All right, so go ahead and get your paint palette back out. And we're gonna use the green. I'm using the Chef Master Leaf Green. Add a little bit to your paint palette. I'm also gonna add, uh, just right off to the side, a dot of the white. Now, thin paintbrush. Right now we're gonna paint these leaves. I wanna do this first, if you need a little water. I like to do different, I'm gonna add the water and the well next to it. There's just a little bit of water here. That way if I feel I need to water it down, I can. Now a lot of these leaves are gonna be covered up with the flowers. I need that a little water. A little bit thick. Sorry if my camera's shaking a little bit. My table seems to be kind of shaky. Now 
Now I like to do this first because as you can see, I'm extending it well into that basket area. That way I don't have to be careful about um, the edge. And I like to think about how I want to layer stuff before I start just to simplify my own life. So this way I'm not working around any edges. So go ahead, paint those leaves. Now the lines for the leaves don't go all the way down. So some of this might just be guesswork as to the shape of them. And that's okay because the reason the lines don't go down is a lot of it's covered up with the flowers. I know a lot of people get nervous when you're freehanding. Just try and follow what seems like the natural line of, the le of those leaves. I'm just kind of doing one solid color at the moment. Although I always like to get in there and uh, afterwards and give it some dimension by adding in other colors. Now, I scratched those leaves in a little bit deep, so you can kind of see the lines. It's okay. I should have got a little lighter handed with that. Okay. Now, if we come back, I'm going to get a little bit of this water, a little bit of this white, and... Start putting in some streaks here. Come back with a little darker. And right now, I'm just kind of blending those colors a little bit. I want that striation. I want the variation in color, but I don't want it to be too bold. I want it to be varied, but blended if that makes sense. You can always come back with just a little bit of water and no color at all on your paintbrush. I also often like to do the darker color a little stronger towards the base where you might see more of those shadows. Now, see, my brush slipped and it's a little thick here. I can come back with some water or because this is just icing, I could even probably just scrape it off right there. Give it that finer point that I wanted. Okay, and now here we have this little stem. I didn't do the stem. Let me come back. So dark. And do just that stem. All right, feeling pretty happy with that. We're gonna set this paint to the side. And now let's talk about the basket. We're gonna make these lines again. I'm just gonna scrape them on. Um, this middle section, so you want to, this, we're just going to eyeball. So this middle section is kind of the widest. I'm sorry, my camera seems to continue to shake every time I make a movement. Okay, so those lines kind of curve in just a little. And then this next section, this should be wider, this should be Let's see, this middle section should be the widest. This second section out should be a little bit smaller, and then this farthest out one should be the smallest. I don't know if I addressed it out, but just enough. Because we want to give it that illusion that it's rounded. So those lines are not perfect, but that's okay because it's just a basic guideline. And as I pipe, I'll kind of make them more perfect. So now we're going to get our 
I like to use a rag when I'm piping. It's just a wet rag. That way I always keep the tip of my icing tucked in. That way it never dries out. Okay. Go ahead and cut a small hole. I'm gonna flatten it out. There's the seam. I'm not flattening it out with the seam. I'm gonna press in so there's air. See that seam? The seam's gonna be, well in this case it's on the bottom. I'm gonna do a small hole. Always start smaller than you think you're gonna need because you can always make it bigger. Okay. Go ahead and just pretty happy with that. Now we're gonna go ahead and pipe these sections. We are not going to touch them. We're gonna be able to pipe them all at once because the sections don't actually touch each other. So I'm gonna start with this first one. Take your time. I'm gonna round this top bit just a little bit. And we're gonna fill that in. Blood. So it's nice and puffy. Go ahead and take your scribe or your thingamajini. I'm just gonna smooth those edges. Now, as you can see, that's actually kind of tilted off. So I'm gonna take this. I like to use circular motions to just kind of pull that icing exactly where I want it. I'm not happy, the scraping end is great for perfecting. Now I know some people like to do that little squiggle down the center so it doesn't collapse. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about, and if you don't, that's fine. I don't feel like it's really that helpful. I know it's kind of a the popular thing to do at the moment, but the reality is I don't actually think it makes a big difference. Um, Okay. So all the more reason to not um, thin out your icing more than necessary because you'll uh, the thinner your icing, the more likely it's going to collapse. Okay. So you see how I'm leaving a little gap there. Going to round this a little bit. The other, I, I tend to start in the middle and work my way out, but you can do that way. Uh, you can do whatever works best for you. Uh, I like to do this so I can try and make sure it stays pretty even. Okay. Yeah, it's all right. If it's not absolutely perfect, because we're going to be doing some other stuff. So see how it came here together in this corner? It's all right. I'm just going to fix that a little. We're going to be piping on top of this, which is one of the nice things of this particular design is does give you a little room for error. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put this under my lamp to uh, set.
set the icing pretty quickly. It doesn't have to be completely dry before we move on to the next step, but it does need to have a pretty good crust over the, that top layer. While that's going, we're gonna go ahead and get our first two of that. And we're just gonna kind of turn that mold inside out and pop it right out. So we're gonna set this aside, especially if you had it in the freezer. Um, there's gonna be a little bit of moisture that sort of comes to the surface as it comes to room temperature. So you wanna pop it out and just set it aside where it won't be in the way. And we're gonna get another one. If you have any left, I didn't turn it out quite right, so I got a little piece. Just make sure you knock that out. Now we're gonna do the same process as before. Just do a little bit of cornstarch. Make sure you push it into all those crevices. Tap out the extra. Now, I want you to notice really quickly. This one here, so this tulip, it's gonna be this one here. Um, it doesn't hurt to make a few extra as we go. As you have a few minutes here and there while you're waiting, you can just keep working on tulips. But this is the only tulip that is just exactly as is out of the mold. This one here, we're gonna do next. Now, if you see, it doesn't stick out as far as this other one. So when we get the fondant from the mold, we're gonna grab a little chunk, massage it, Need it, make sure it's, massage it, <laughs> need it. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put it in again, just like we did before. Make sure you press it into all those little crevices. But then this time, and it helps to get a little bit of cornstarch on your finger. This time we're actually gonna press in, so make sure it's in there. You're not, you're not going into the, um, the stem part, but then we're actually, I'm gonna press it in. Do you see how I'm like, let me get that one extra. Oh, I just pressed, there we go, one. Okay, so normally I would fill this and have it come all the way to the top edge. Do you see how it's kind of concave there? It's not completely filled in. We're gonna let it set like this. And when we pull it out, what we're gonna do is we're gonna press down gently and it's gonna kind of flatten out. That's how we get this very slightly differently shaped but uh, but flatter tulip. So we still get the 3D effect, but now you have the one that's closer to you and the one that's further away. So I'm gonna go pop this in the freezer. Now this isn't 100% dry, but you can see by that shine, there's a nice crust over it. I'm gonna get our piping consistency. <laughs> It's all upside down. I know that most of you are right-handed, so I had the writing be as if you were right-handed, but it does make it a little confusing for me because it's all upside down. Okay, same thing as before. We're gonna flatten out that seam. Cut a pretty small hole. I like to use piping tips when I'm doing something precision, you know, like lettering, but for something like this, that's fine. So if you're squeezing and it starts to curl, I'm trying to make it do it like, can you kind of see? If it starts to curl in these little like coils as you're coming out, that means that your icing is too thick for the size, size hole that you've cut. So either thin out your icing or you can cut the hole a little bit bigger, but you don't want that those lines to be too thick because we're going to be we're about that thickness. All right, now literally all we're gonna do is we're just gonna start, well, start at whatever end works for you. I'm thinking about probably starting at the bottom. Okay, so we're gonna start and just pull it across. Start, start with the tip of your icing bag in that crevice that we left open and you're gonna pull it across into the next one. And I just want you to Go all the way up that way. If the lines touch, that's fine. If they're minor, just barely not touching. So you can see that background. I'm just gonna go all the way up. And when I'm done with this section, I'm just gonna move and I'm gonna do every single one. Thank you. 
Now, as you see, as I start to get close to the top here, I'm going to start curving those lines a little because by the time I get to this very top, I want those lines to curve just like that top edge does. Starting to curl. That means I probably hit a section of icing where it wasn't mixed as well. It's a little thicker, so I'm just going to pull it out. If that makes sense. I'm just going to pull all that. Try to get some new icing, if that makes sense. And I'm going to just take that last line off. Okay, before I move on to the next one, if I see anything that's maybe a little lumpier than I want it to, now's a good time to just... I don't want to pull it all the way through because I don't want... Or pull that tip all the way through that line. There we go. Just wanted to get anything that big. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the next section. If you have a spot that connects in a way you don't want it to, you can just, before it sets, just drag the tip through. Okay. And keep going. Now for this end piece, before I move on and this dries, just going to knock off any lumps because I want this to have a nice clean edge. Now, don't do what I just did when I went to turn, this is why I should be using a turntable right now. Um, I put my finger <laughs> in this as I went to turn it. See, I gotta say, it's, it's interesting doing these videos. It's a little out of my element. I'm the sort of person that wants to decorate just like totally alone. And I just kind of get into the process. So doing this sort of thing on video <laughs> and having to explain my my thought process and everything, it's going to be new for me, but it's going to be good. Um, and, you know, I think we'll get better as we go along. So hopefully this first one, you guys are like my, my trial run. <laughs> hopefully this is okay. Hopefully this is okay and you guys are following what I'm doing. You'll have to let me know. I've been starting kind of in the middle of these sections and that's not it's just a personal preference thing um, you just have to find the angle and the direction when you're doing a lot of piping of lines like this you just got to figure out what is the most comfortable and this seems to be it for me okay up this edge. Okay. Now, at this point, there's not much to do until it's completely dry. Um, as for this part of the cookie, we have some other things we can do while we wait for it to dry. But um, we're going to be painting this, giving it that dimension. And we don't want to paint it until it's completely dry. 
you can paint icing that's not totally dry, but I've almost always regretted it. So there we go. I'm going to set it aside. We're going to let this fully dry while we wait for that to dry. Let's pop out this second tulip. We're going to just turn this inside out. Pop it out. Now, while it's still, it wouldn't hurt to have a little cornstarch on your fingers. We're going to flatten this just a little. Also, before it sets too much, now this is where it gets a little interesting. We're going to, we need this to fit inside of this. So I'm going to grab, grab whatever tool works for you. Um, you can go ahead and use your thingamajini. You can use a scribe. If you have something like a piping tip, piping tips work great. We're going to basically be, we're going to think about the angle we want these to be. So I'm going to take this and I'm just going to cut that chunk out. Okay, so at this point they'd have to sit kind of like that. It's too much of an angle. So I'm going to, this is really just me eyeballing it. Kind of put it on top like, okay, it needs to sit like that. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to take a little corner out here. Now, if this doesn't work out the way you want, just make a new one and play with it until you feel like it's pretty good. So I'm going to take that. As long as it's still pliable, I can kind of mold this around. See what I'm doing? Just make it fit. Get a little more cornstarch. I don't want this to get my fingerprint. And that cornstarch can be dusted off at the end, so it's okay. Get some on there. Okay. I think that'll do. So I'm going to go ahead and take that out so they're not stuck together. And like I said, don't worry about the cornstarch. We can dust that off at the end. We're going to be painting these two. So, all right. Now, we're going to do two more in that same way where we're going to kind of flatten it so the mold isn't completely full. So same thing, just pressing it in, but kind of flattening it because I want this tulip to not be too, too raised. All right, go pop that in the freezer. Next, we're gonna start mixing up the yellow a little bit. Now this, we want to be super thick consistency. So this is straight out of the bowl. We're gonna add a little bit of yellow. All right, so I've got the Chef Master Neon Bright Yellow. We're just gonna add a tiny bit. We only need a soft yellow. It's looking pretty good. Nice soft yellow. Now, here's how we can find out if it's thick enough. So you should have a piece of this kind of fabric. This is We're gonna press this in to make a texture. I'm just gonna press, see how some come off. Now we're gonna use, I'm gonna use some cornstarch or you can use powdered sugar. But I just wanna see how much it sticks without anything. It's actually not bad. So I think we're gonna leave this thickness, but if you press the fabric in and it, a lot of it comes off, then you know it's too thick. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab another piping bag. This is gonna be really thick. It's good though, that's what we want. Go ahead and tie off that end however you want to. I'm gonna use my bag sealer again. Okay. Okay, now you need a small piece of parchment. Um, you can also use some clear plastic. Basically, we're just gonna make some transfers. Okay, so here's what we're gonna be piping just the knots and the little tails of these ribbons. So go ahead and flatten out that seam. We're gonna be cutting a hole. You're gonna need to cut it a little bit bigger because this is really thick. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna think about that size 
I mean, it's pretty small. And you can do a few. I like to do a few, and then you have some to choose from. So I'm going to pipe just a big blob, kind of triangular. I'm just going to use this to sort of give it that triangular shape. Got your cornstarch nearby. I'm going to dust it because then you can kind of manipulate it without it sticking. Okay, so I'm going to do kind of a triangular shape. And then we're going to do another sort of smaller triangular shape right next to it. I also find that like a filbert brush, if you have something like that, you just need something to sort of shape it and get cornstarch on there. Okay. And then I'm going to take this fabric, while it's still pliable, I'm just going to very gently press it down. You don't want to flatten it too much and pull it off. You're going to have that texture. Now you can go ahead, if you flatten it too much, you can take this and kind of raise up those edges, shape it however you want it shaped. Okay. Now we're going to do a few of those. That way, once it's all dry, you have a few options to choose from. So, and I'm going to do a cold starch. It might be easier to just press the fabric in now and shape it. As long as the shape is close enough. If you just look at the knot of a ribbon or any kind of tie like that, that'll give you a rough idea of what a, a knot is really shaped like. So whatever looks most realistic to you. Now, we're going to do the same thing, but for the tails of these ribbons. So this is more like, think of it like a little diamond shape. I'm going to do a couple of these. Go ahead and dust them. If your royal icing is too thin, go ahead and put it back in a bowl, add some more powdered sugar. Cornstarch actually works too, although powdered sugar will taste better, until you're happy with the thickness. But it is important that it's thick. All right, so I want these little ends to come to a point and I wanted it to kind of get thicker, but I need this part to come to a little bit of a point as well because that's where the ribbon would gather when it goes into the knot, if that makes sense. They don't need to be exactly the same. Sorry if you guys hear banging in the background. My husband is <laughs> loading up a trip to the dump. I can hear the banging. All right. Now take the tip, and I want you to give a couple little, this is just that little sort of pleat. Pleat's not the right word. Gather? I don't know. Right where the ribbon comes into the knot. And you can't see that very well at the moment, but that's okay, because we're going to fill it in. Uh, we're going to paint it. Okay, I'm going to do a couple more of those. Like I said, I always like to have a few options, also that way if something breaks... All right, now these we're just gonna set aside. I'm gonna let them dry. All right, popping out another one of these tulips. Pull that out. Make sure there's a little bit of cornstarch on my finger. I'm gonna flatten it just a little. Now, let's have this one be this one here, which means we need, I'm gonna go ahead, think about the angle you want it and how, like just how much you want sticking out of that basket. Go like that. Now I think that line needs to be a little less curved. I'm gonna just take off a little, like that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put that up there. And we have one more, just this one here to make. So same thing, get a cornstarch. 
get our fondant and we're going to underfill it again. If it's sticking to your finger too much, use some of that extra cornstarch. Okay. So we want it to be nice and shallow. Okay. Now, this one's going back in the freezer. When your basket is dry, we're going to get painting. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use a brown. This is that same Buckeye brown that we very softly colored the icing with earlier. A little bit of that, a little bit of white on the edge there. Now, for this, if all you have is that same thin one we used with the green earlier, that's fine. If you have something a little bit thicker, then this will be better with something a little thicker, but you can really use either one. Okay, I'm going to add just a little bit of water to that brown. Now, I want just a very small amount, and I'm going to get in, I'm going right in to that crevice between the sections. That's where we're going to start. Now be careful as you get to the outer edges. You don't want to get any of this brown on the white background of the cookie. Take a little more and now start very gently. Don't put any on the outside edge. Very softly. We want to start in small increments because once that color's on, you can't remove it. Things you can do to lighten it up, but you can never take it back. So just try and start small. Just start slowly pulling that darker color towards the center. We want the darkest color to be in between each section because we want that illusion of roundness. So we want it to be darker as we go into the crevice and lighter on this part. That um, the part that would be closest to you. Okay. Now, once you feel like you got a little bit, now we're going to grab some of that white. Also, I'm going to add just a little bit of water here. It's always good to have a little water to pull from. Use a little bit of that white, and I'm going to start in the center and start kind of go in the center, but then overlap with that brown, the darker edges. Do you see how it's starting to blend? It's pulling those darker tones in. I really hope my camera's not shaking too much, guys. I'm going to find a better way to stabilize it next time I do a video. But I apologize if it's doing a lot of shaking. Okay, see that it's starting to blend? That's what we want. We want that lightest color in the center. The center section is going to be the most obvious because it's the, it's the biggest. So see how it's nice and bright here in the middle and then I'm going to come to the edge. I'm not even grabbing new color. It's the moisture from the color that I'm using or from this light is pulling in those darker tones from the side. Now, this is a wider section, so I act, actually can I add a little more darkness on this middle piece. Now, here's the thing with painting. As long as you don't use too much water, because, as well, okay, let me start by saying, as long as your icing is 100% dry, and as long as you're not using too much liquid, I say liquid because I'm using water to paint. Some people use alcohol. I do not like to use alcohol for painting because the alcohol sort of seeps into the surface of the royal icing. And so you have less room for error. If it seeps in, you can't go back and, you know, sort of erase any mistakes you made. With water, you have a little bit of room for error, because you can actually do a little bit of erasing, but only if you don't use too much water, because a lot of water and you'll still pit the surface and, you know, same thing will happen. So, 
a little bit of water, only as much water as I think is absolutely necessary. But as long as you don't overdo it, then you can keep going over it and going over it and manipulating the color until you're satisfied with the end result. Okay. So, the basic idea is there. Being the perfectionist that I am, I really want to go in and and just <laughs> do more. I always want to do more. I'm going to emphasize. I'm going back in. I'm coming back in with the dark. Emphasizing that space in between. You don't remember to do that on the outside edge. Be very careful with that outside edge so you're not getting it on the white. I did get a little bit on the white already. And at the very end, I'm going to go in and clean that up. Because to a small extent, I can clean that up and it's always worth cleaning up the edges because that's going to give you a very different finished look. A little more white. Get a paper towel. It's always good to have a paper towel handy so you can wipe off excess if your brush is too wet or you've got too much color. What I'm doing is going to look very stark, that white. But that's okay. That's because I'm looking at this like I want to give it even more definition. So I'm going to put that strong white on the front. Give it a little bit of water. Nothing too dark. And I'm just going to soften the edges. Now, this is really a process that I could do all day <laughs> because I like to, uh, I like these little details. I like to spend my time in them, but I'm going to try not to do that. I'm going to move on because you guys don't want to watch me do this all day, I'm sure. I'm going to give the very bottom edge a little extra dark. All right. There's lots more that I could do with this. Coming in, this, all I have on the brush right now is a little bit of water. That way I can go in and just soften any edges that I think are maybe a little too harsh. Okay. Now, if you do see any spots where you, uh, the color got off, I'm going to take this and I'm just going to sort of scrape it to give it a nice clean, I'm doing this off camera, nice clean edge. Okay. Next, while we wait for the little ties to dry, we're going to go ahead and pipe this. So, this is going to be very much like these ties, except it's not going to be a transfer. We're going to do it directly on the cookie. We're going to start with this little piece up in the center because we want that to be flatter because it's where the, the ribbon kind of comes up and turns in on itself and then, you know, if that makes sense. So. We're going to start with this section and then we're going to do these two. We want to make sure it comes in kind of to a point like where it puckers where it would um, be gathered there. So that's kind of the general idea of it. Um, you don't need to mark your cookie for this per se because it's a ribbon and it's kind of an organic shape. It's not the sort of thing that needs to be a very rigid, very perfect uh, shape. However, if it makes you feel better, you can draw uh, maybe scratch in or whatever, a very rough guideline. Um, I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just going to go for it. Okay, so this top part to start. Let me get, clean up my workspace a little first. Move that up to the side. Okay. 
Okay, so this part doesn't need to be super thick. It's almost like a little triangle-ish shape. Same exact process as before. Get a little cornstarch to make sure nothing sticks. Take a little piece of this fabric, press it down. This part we actually do want to be sort of flat. And then use whatever tool you want to come in and shape it. Now I don't have an exact shape I'm going for here. Okay. Now, same thing, but again, remember it comes to a little bit of a point here, and then it's going to get wider, and then it's going to taper off there where it kind of wraps around. That first section I pressed down a little bit harder because I wanted it to be flat, but this one make sure not to press too hard because we don't want to flatten this piece too much. All right, we're gonna make sure to shape it so it kind of comes in there. I'm gonna smooth these edges. It's not very smooth when I piped it because it's so thick, but I wasn't really worried about that since I knew it's gonna be shaping it. Emphasize this line. I don't want it to get lost. And again, we're going to paint this so it'll be more obvious once it's painted, but still. All right, same thing on the other side. It helps to have a point. Make sure you, wherever you start. See, I kind of started at this spot where this first section ends. So I'm going to start at the same spot over here. But... It doesn't have to be that point, especially if you did your basket a little bit differently. Um, just make sure it's at the same, wherever you started it here, make sure it's at the same point on the other side so that it looks even. You want it to be symmetrical-ish. All right. It's okay if you get cornstarch on like the leaves or anything like that, that's totally fine because that'll all brush off. Okay, now make sure none of your ribbon comes up and over the basket because it should be going on the inside. All right, set this aside to dry. All right, let's go ahead and pop out the last tulip. Love molds because look, look how pretty that is and look how easy that was. All right, so this last one is going to be the one that goes along this top edge. Let's take a look. Kind of pay attention to how curved that top edge is of yours. All right, so it's kind of at this angle. Flatten it out a little bit. Take that out. Now that's a little too curved for my needs. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this tool. Okay. Might not be perfect. We can go ahead and put it here. I'm going to take my brush, kind of soften that edge. And then I'm going to put it over here. So it can kind of harden a little bit. All right, now all we have left is painting this and assembling this uh, yellow ribbon and then the tulips. So go ahead and get your transfers out. If they're all the way dry, they should really just pop off. You can see these didn't even, these were already moving around when I put it down. So go ahead and look at the pieces that you have and pick out your favorites. Kind of, this is why I like to have more than one. About like that, maybe slightly smaller one. It's okay. 
okay if there's powder getting on there because all of that's going to brush off. I think you're pretty happy with that. Okay. And then find your ribbons. I might move these up a little. They seem a little bit low. There we go. I like to do these as transfers because they hold their shape better instead of um, the icing sort of seeping in to the icing below it and it, it um, loses that shape. Okay. Not to mention you get to sit here and play around with it and have it be exactly like you want. Okay. So I kind of have the tails kind of coming out this way towards the outside because I feel like if this was a real bag it would they would kind of come out that way but just sort of play with the placement you want this little top edge of the rim to kind of tuck in a little bit to your knot so figure out what looks the best for yours something kind of like that once you're pretty happy with the placement I'm looking at this one like I don't know if this one would be better okay this is me being nitpicky again I need to just stop <laughs> Do I like that one better? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm just going to go back to this one because there's nothing wrong with that one. I'm just move these. So I'm not thinking about it. <laughs> because I really, I'm such a, I mess with all that stuff so much. Okay. Go ahead and get your thick yellow icing. Um, you could also use the brown icing underneath. That way, if any of it leaks out, you're not going to get the yellow. But either way really is fine. So... Just get a little bit on the back. Not so much it's gonna squish out a bunch, just enough that it's gonna glue it. Same thing with this. Keep pulling it off out of the shot. The first one's a little dry. Okay, looking good so far. Now we're gonna do the same thing with this yellow ribbon, more or less, that we did with the basket underneath. Let me get some yellow. Um, <laughs> my paint palette always looks so messy by the time I'm done. So get a little bit of that yellow and grab a little dot of white. You know, get rather a fresh one because that one ha right there has green in it. Now this one, use your smaller brush. Okay, we're gonna add a little bit of water here too. We don't want this to be too strong of a yellow. But again, only use as much water as you need. Now we're gonna start by getting in to these crevices here. I also want this to be a little darker because this would be like the yellow in the background. Okay, I'm gonna grab a different brush. This still had a little bit of green. I don't have a sink where I'm at. You wanna make sure your brush is completely washed. I tried, you know, using a little water in a rag, but it wasn't enough to wash out the green from earlier. Uh, if you have a sink, wash it properly. <laughs> I don't have easy access to a sink. I'm at. So I'm just going to grab a fresh brush, but any, any fine tip brush is fine. But I was starting to see hints of green and I don't want green on my ribbon. So like I said, start doing yellow anywhere. There's a crevice also around the outside edges. Give it that dimension. I'm not being super, super careful here. This is kind of a, it's okay if this is kind of a messy process. And as long as I'm not just dripping liberal amounts onto the color underneath, especially on these, like a tiniest bit of yellow getting on that basket, you're not even going to see it. I'm going to be a little more careful when you are by the white, because you will see that. I'm just trying to go really light around the edges. We're going to soften that up even more in a minute. I always think it's a good idea to have a highlight and a low light, whatever color you're working with. That way you can come in and emphasize. Okay, you know what I didn't do that I meant to is right here where the ribbon meets up. I meant to do these little gather lines 
before it dried and I forgot. So I'm going to paint those on. Hopefully it'll be close enough. But I meant to press that in while the icing was still wet. And same thing a little bit up here where the ribbon would be bunching. I meant to kind of have some lines up there. Okay, I'm going to need a little bit of this watery yellow, pull in some of this white, start doing exactly what I did on the basket part. I'm just going to start easing that line in. I don't want to give it dimension, but keep it blended. Now, if you notice on this cookie versus the first one I did, let me move it down to view. This is a little bit brighter, and the if you look at the ribbon, this is a little bit more toned down. I had mixed in some other colors to kind of do that, and you can even take a little bit of this ivory. Well, ivory, it's not ivory, it's light brown. Um, <clears throat> if you take some of this lighter brown and mix it in, you'll get toned down that yellow, and you can kind of um, have that effect. But I think it looks nice this way too. So I think this one I'm going to do without the brown. See how I like it. But that is, but you can kind of see if you look closely, there's, there's hints of that brown. Okay. I think when I'm all done, I'm going to go back over some of those lines that I did. That does give it a little bit of a different look. This one's a little brighter, so a little more toned down. I think I might take a tiny bit of that brown. I'll grab a little bit of brown over here. Some of this yellow. Took too much of the brown. The brown is very overpowering, so I should have used less. There we go. Only too, not too much. Just to really emphasize these lines, just the creases, and <laughs> these lines that I painted on earlier, which I should have done that detail at the end because we were going to be painting over that. Ooh, I like that better, you can see those lines. When you're painting or doing any of this, sometimes you really just have to, you really just gotta play with it until you are happy with the result. Okay. I can always come back later, but I gotta stop messing with it. That is something I just have to tell myself a lot to stop messing with it. Okay. <clears throat> I feel like some of these lines are just a little harsh. I know, I'm doing it again. I'm just messing with it. I can't stop. <laughs> it's what I do. Okay. Really, I'm going to stop now. Okay. Alright, so all we have left is the tulips. Now, there are a couple ways we can assemble this. First, I'm gonna dust some of this excess off. Now, we can paint them before we put them on the cookie or after. There are benefits and drawbacks to both. These pieces are so small and fondant gets really sticky when it's wet. So if you paint them while not on the cookie, it's very hard to hold them in place and keep them from moving around. On the other hand, because these are stronger colors, if you put them on the cookie first, you run the risk of, uh, you know, getting that dark fuchsia paint on the cookie. But I think we're gonna add these first. It really is, I've done it both ways, and it really is very hard <laughs> to, uh, to keep them in place when you want to paint them. So 
fondant. There are a lot of ways you can attach fondant. My favorite way is just water. That's all you need. Just a little bit of water because, like I said, fondant is very sticky when wet. And since we're adhering it to a very flat surface, that's all you need. If we were putting the fondant and attaching it to, like, say, the basket, that would be different. Because of all those ridges, it would still stick probably just fine. But to ensure that it doesn't come off, I would use a little bit of royal icing. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this rag that I was using on my using for my uh, royal icing. I'm just going to get one spot really wet. That way you can just get the water. And you don't need a ton of water. You see how you can kind of see it shiny? That's all you need. Okay, so this one. Go in here. Be very careful when you're picking these up in case they're not completely set yet. Okay. Make sure these are angled how I want them. That looks pretty good. Okay. And there we go. Now all that's left is to paint them. You're going to want your fine tip brush again. Okay. Last color is this fuchsia. And again, just a little dot of white. Now grab your fine tooth paintbrush, or fine tooth, <laughs> your fine tip paintbrush. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the color undiluted. I'm gonna tilt this cookie up and I wanna get the dark, all of the inside of those tulips. You see what I'm talking about? All the, the little petals so that when you see it from the top, oh, grabbing the brown. So when you see it from the top, you're gonna see all the, now be very careful as you get close to the cookie. Now, I have very shaky hands, you guys. Very shaky hands. Whenever I'm doing finer details, I always have people ask me, or tell me that they can't do it, rather, that because their hands are too shaky. I'd like to show you guys. I think it's a good reminder. Okay, they're not too bad right now. I get these, like, trimmers from blood sugar problems. Um, sometimes this is actually pretty good. I didn't know what it was going to be like. I never quite know unless I hold it out. Sometimes they're really, really bad. Um, those of you who've taken classes with me in person, some of you guys have seen it when it's really bad. But, grab a little bit of water. When I'm painting, always, always stabilize. Okay, so when you're painting, use something to stabilize that hand. Not just holding it like this, but use your other hand in some way to stabilize. I promise it seems like such a small thing, but it makes a huge difference. So in this case, because I'm holding it at an angle... And I can't use rest anything on there. I'm if you see I'm holding it like this, like I was holding my pinky out, whoop, holding my pinky out to stabilize. And I'll change positions depending on the angle I'm painting at, but just always, always use a, your other hand to stabilize, and I promise it'll make a huge difference. Okay, so I got the dark in there. I'm coming back with some water to soften some of those edges because it's very dark right now. And that's okay because we're going to be blending some of that down. I keep coming off camera because I'm focused on what's in my hand. Now, since we're painting, since we're painting on fondant and not royal icing, you have a little more freedom with how much water you use. Still don't want to use a ton because it's going to go dripping onto the rest of your cookie. However, you don't have to worry about pitting like you do with royal icing. See, I'm taking the paintbrush and applying it down to that edge as well, that crevice between the petals. 
and coat up with just a little bit of that white. Make sure the edges are softened. Okay. Now I want you to start, I'm gonna water this down just a little bit. I always like my colors with water, not with white, because it's gonna change the tone a bit, although we are gonna use white on these. And start down at the base and pull some of these dark. See how it's darker, but not, not super dark. You can always add more color. And then pulling up the color just a little bit. I like to do all the tulips at once, since I want them to be pretty much the same. This ensures that I'm using the same colors and the same technique on each one. Now there's a little bit of a gap in there. Probably the fondant's too dry for me to get in and move it. So if I just get in there with some color and fill that in, you won't really see it. Keep pulling it in closer to me as I work. Try to remember not to do that so you guys can see. Okay, same thing. I'm gonna add a little bit of white. That's a slightly different shade. Now here's what I want you to do. Everyone's everyone's tulips are gonna look a little different. I want you to keep playing with shades, add a little water to lighten it up, but keep it translucent, add some white to give it that opaque effect. Use the darker for really bold and just layer the color, keep working. The important thing is you want it to be at least to some degree blended. It's okay to have a little bit of non-blending. I feel like tulips are like that anyway, or can be anyway. But I want you to just do whatever you think is pretty kind of did the darker on the bottom that kind of gives it that rounded shape too I'm gonna probably come back on these ones and darken that bottom edge in a little bit and every time my paintbrush if my paintbrush is too wet I'm wiping it off on the rag because I don't want water dripping anywhere but if it starts to feel too dry like I'm painting and the, and the color's not moving I'm gonna dip it back into that that water all right I'm going to come back and I want these a little darker because I want that underside. And this, you can layer the color as much as you want. I just want you to go until you are happy with the results. Keep doing that, keep pulling it in towards me. Okay. I should, <laughs> for your sake, just stop messing with it. All right, so there we go. To let it dry, the fondant takes a little bit longer to dry, so expect it to stay tacky for a while. Careful not to touch it, but there we go. All right, you guys, I hope you had fun. Um, I hope you are proud of the cookies that you decorated. Please, please send me your photos, tag me on social media. If you do post on social media, Use, uh, use the hashtag decorate with KZ. That way I will see it. And I'm also going to put together a highlight reel of people who've taken the class. Um, but I really want to see your cookies. And I really hope that you had fun with it and that you're proud of what you did above all. Um, so don't forget to give me your feedback. Uh, I can honestly say I've already thought of a number of things I'll do differently next time to make it better. And let me know if you have requests for future classes because I'm going to start doing these on a regular basis. Anyway, I hope you guys had fun.